guys, welcome back to my channel. So fairly recently, I made a jewelry making video and honestly, I was a little surprised by how much you guys actually liked it. Um, and I got a lot of comments saying specifically that you guys wanted a more in-depth tutorial on these ear cuffs that I made. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you guys today. And so for the actual flowers and leaves that you see on here, I made those two with stringy dinks. And I just got these ones off of Amazon and basically everything else for this project I got at Michael's and I linked a bunch of supplies in my last jewelry making video basically everything I bought so if you're looking to kind of set up your own little stash you might want to check out those links um, it'll also try to link most of the stuff that I use for this project and yeah let's get to your cuff making so I'm thinking that the first part we should start on with this project is making all of these shrinky dink flowers and leaves and for this, I actually ended up making my own little template. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that too. All you do is fold a piece of paper in half, and then we're going to fold it into thirds. And it might take a few tries to get the angles just right on the thirds, but you can kind of just manipulate it until you have it just right. And now that we have these perfect thirds, we're going to cut out like a half flower shape. And this doesn't have to be perfect because we're just going to be using this as our reference. And then when you unfold it, you should have this three-petaled flower shape. And this is what we're going to be using to trace all of our flowers. And now we're just going to take our shrinking plastic and this cutout, and I'm going to trace four of these out, but two of them, I'm going to make them slightly smaller than this actual cutout. And now I'm just going to cut all of these out. And now that they're all cut out, I'm just going to erase all the pencil lines. Does anybody else have like a collection of these erasers, like those funky ones that you got as a child, but were like too emotionally attached to them to like actually use until like you turn 20 and now you're trying to like use them because you have so freaking many of them that you can't really get rid of? Um, because if so, you guys should drop your favorite ones in the comments because I think my ramen bowl is really cute. <laughs> and now that we have all of the flowers cut out, I'm just going to freehand a couple of leaves on the rest of this. And so I mostly cut out this regular leaf shape and some heart shaped ones. And now we need to color in all of our pieces. So to color these pieces in, the way I usually do this is I actually use a combination of soft pastels and colored pencils. And so the first thing I'm going to do is choose the colors that I want to make the flowers. And I think this time I'm going to do like a soft yellow pink ombre on these. I just put a piece of paper underneath this and I grabbed a little paper towel that I'm going to just fold up. And I'm going to take my first color that I want to use for the centers. And I'm just going to rub it onto the paper towel and then I'm going to brush it onto the shrinky dinks. And the shrinky dinks have two sides, one of which is matte and the other is like a glossy finish. And so you want to make sure that we're doing this to the matte side because otherwise it will not stick. And now the yellow is on, so I'm just going to choose my pink color and finish up the edges of the petals. And because we are going to be shrinking the shrinky dinks down, even if you think the colors are super, super light, they're still going to turn out pretty dark because obviously when it shrinks down, the colors are going to get more concentrated. So you really don't have to worry about it too much. And there's all of my flowers. And then we just have the leaves left to do. And for the leaves, it's pretty much the same thing. I use my soft pastel to get an overall green color, but then I'm going to go back and use my colored pencils to do like the little leaf veins. And now this is only the really hard and nerve wracking part because we have to add little holes at the bottom so we can actually attach these to the earrings. But I don't have a hole puncher at my house, so I usually just shove some scissors through it and like pray that I don't wreck the entire thing. Let's give it a try! So I'm going to be using these really sharp scissors and like the quilted top of my sewing box and just hoping I don't wreck the entire thing right now. Okay, that one went well. And then once I have the base hole, um, I actually have this little like round nail file that I'm just going to use to make the hole bigger. And that worked actually pretty well. Two down, a lot more to go. And I did actually accidentally break this one, so I think I'm just going to cut it down and retry it. 
and that time it worked. And now that these all have their little holes, we can finally put them in the oven. And so I'm going to be using my little toaster oven for these, but you can do a regular oven too. And so you're going to set it to be 350 degrees. And you're just going to put them in until they finish totally shrinking, and then you're going to pull them out. And doing the leaves is super, super easy. Um, but for the flowers, actually, I'm going to be doing them one or maybe two at a time because when you pull them back out of the oven, we only have a few seconds before they cool off and we need to shape the petals so that they kind of curve in a bit. So be really careful and don't burn your fingers, but this is how we achieve that flower shape. All right, well, all of my dinks have officially been shrinked. And now we can actually start making the base of the ear cuff. So for this project, I'm actually probably going to be using three types of wire. Um, this one is really thick and sturdy, and this is what we're going to be using to make like the skeleton of it to hold everything onto. This one I'm going to use if you want to make like decorative swirls or things like that, which I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. And then this one is super, super thin wire that is insanely easy to like mold and mess with. And so this is what we're going to be using to tie everything on. But I'm going to be starting with the really thick wire and I'm just going to unwind some and cut a chunk off. And then I'm going to fold this piece in half. So when I first made the original one, um, it only had this part that went around your ear to secure it. And a few weeks later, I ended up adding this thing that goes over the top of your ear to kind of help bear some of the weight of it. So I'm going to incorporate that right off of the bat to make this one more secure. So I just folded this in half and pushed these together to get this nice little corner here. And now I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to fold this down and kind of round it out. So it looks like this. And you're going to have to kind of work this piece directly on your ear to make it fit just the way you want it. But now I'm going to go down to where the center of my ear kind of is and I'm going to bend these pieces at a right angle. But make sure you mark that on your ear first. And while I was fitting it around my ear, I found it was more comfortable to kind of do this loose curve right here and then make it go outwards. And now we're going to start curving the actual cuff part around our ear. So I'm just going to kind of bend it where I think it needs to go and keep trying it on as I do this. And then once I kind of know where I need it to start curving back in my ear, I'm going to fold these pieces back out like this, but away from each other. So now this is kind of where I'm at. And for a little try on as we go, this is kind of what I'm working with. So this part goes around the top of your ear and we want these around this little part right here. And then it loops around the back of my ear to make this a lot more secure. And so to get these parts right here to kind of hug around my ear, I found that taking a Sharpie or a Bic marker works really well for that kind of curve. And now I kind of folded those in half again and made them kind of follow the other curve back out. And now about right here, I'm actually going to bend this up like so on either side. And then from here, we want it to follow like the curve of our ear on the outside so that we're going to have enough space to put all our flowers. And so I'm going to go to the end of my ears and then again, curve the wire back in. And so that's what mine's kind of looking like right now. It's a bit of a mess. So now I'm going to clean it up off of my ear. And then I'm just going to curve these back into like the cuff part and I'm going to cut the ends and curl them in so that they don't poke us. So I've been working on cleaning mine up and this is what it's looking like now and I'm finally really happy with it and it's really, really secure. And so now we can put flowers all along this here. And also as reference, this is what it looks like not on my ear. And so I like to start by attaching a flower to like the middle-ish and then kind of adding beads all the way around it. So I'm going to take my flowers that go on top of each other and I'm going to take this really thin wire that I showed you and I'm just going to cut a piece off. And I'm actually going to take three of these really tiny beads that I have and string these together. What? Okay, I've already dropped them. Oh my goodness. And then I'm going to put the beads in the center and I'm going to twist the wire to hold them together. And then I'm going to thread both wires through both of my flowers and the beads are going to become the center of my flowers. And that's what it should look like. And then I'm going to kind of split the wires at the bottom to make sure that it's holding the flower in place. 
And then I'm going to take one of my leaves and string it onto one of the wires. And again, I'm going to kind of put it where I want it, and then I'm going to twist the wires to secure it. And I think I'm going to do a different leaf on the other side. And then I just used a second wire to tie the two leaves together because I wanted them to keep at this angle. And then I think I'm going to use this wire up here to attach some beads to it. And so it's the same kind of deal where I'm just going to thread a bead on and then twist the wires together. And I think I'm going to do a few more here because I really like it. And sometimes I do more little bunches of three, sometimes I do just one. You just kind of place them wherever you like them. And now that I have this really pretty cluster, I'm going to attach it to the actual ear cuff. And I think I'm going to loop it through this little bottom hole here and around this part up here. We really want to avoid though looping anything on these if we can because I made that mistake last time and it stopped fitting my ear as well as it did. But these parts don't actually add any support, so that's the best place to tie things on. And there's honestly no special trick to this, unfortunately. I just kind of wrap it around until I feel like it's secure enough. Alright, and now I'm just going to pray that that is secure enough and chop off the little extras. And it's already looking so cute. And because this part is so big, I think I'm going to do some smaller stuff towards the top and bottom. So I think I'm going to make a little branch of these really tiny beads that we used earlier. So like we did before, I'm just going to take a section of wire and build it up before we attach it. So I'm going to start this the same way that we did last time and I'm going to string on three of these beads and then twist them up in the middle. And then I'm going to keep twisting until we have kind of a long section here. And then I'm going to turn one of these and branch it upwards. And I'm just going to add one on this one. And then I'm going to fold it and twist it back to make another long branch. And then I'm going to keep making these little branches and clusters until I'm happy with it. And then I think I'm also going to add on some bigger beads as well to kind of fill up the space a bit more. And now that I have this cluster, again, I'm just going to tie it on. And then I'm just going to add more to the bottom. And there's really no right or wrong way to do any of this, so you really just have to have fun with it and feel it out as you go. Alright, so I attached the last cluster and this is now what the earpiece is looking like. I'm really, really in love with this design. Um, and it's almost done. The only thing left I want to do is I want to add some like dangling parts because I always think those are really, really pretty. So I'm thinking one of the dangles I want to be this really big pearl and the other one I want to be this kind of teardrop crystal. And so we're going to need to use these little wire pieces to make them attachable to chains. And these I just got at Michael's. They have a little like end on the bottom here to hold onto the beads. But because my pearl one has such a big opening, it's actually going to slide right through it. So I'm going to add on just a smaller bead on the bottom and then add this one on top. And now we have to make a little loop at the top. So I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and I'm going to kind of bend the wire first so that it's kind of at an angle to start with. And then I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and put them a little bit away from the end here. And I'm going to wrap the wire around it the other way until we have this loop shape. And I'm just going to cut the wire right at the end of the loop. And then it should look like this. And now I'm just going to take some really tiny chain and I just cut it to the length that I liked. And now I'm going to take my bead and I'm actually going to open up the loop we just made. Just big enough so that we can slide our chain on. And then I'm just going to thread it through and close up the loop again. And now it's attached. And then to attach the other end to the ear cuff, I'm going to take a small jumper ring, which just looks like this. And again, I'm going to open it up with my needle nose pliers. And then I'm going to thread it through the other end of my chain. And then I'm going to attach this to the bottom of my ear cuff. And now to keep it in place, I might even wrap some wire around the bottom just so it doesn't slide around. All right, and I think I just want to add one more and then this piece will be officially done. 
So like I said, I think I'm going to use the teardrop one right here, coming off of more of the side of the earpiece. So I'm just going to repeat the exact same steps I did with the last one to attach it. All right, and this piece is officially done. And now for the other side, I think I'm going to make a mini version of it to wear just as an ear cuff, the same way that I did for the last one, so I really liked that asymmetrical look. So to make that one, whoop, that's the wrong wire. So to make this one, again, I'm going to be using my really thick wire to make the base of it. And we're not going to need quite as much wire as last time. So I'm just going to cut off a good sized piece. And again, I'm going to start just by folding it in the middle. And this time I'm going to use my little marker and I'm actually going to start wrapping this around it. And then before they start actually touching, I'm going to give them a little bit of room and I'm going to curve them back outwards away from each other. And then I'm going to take it off my marker and make this a little bit nicer. And now that I have these nicer edges here, I'm going to hold them with my pliers and start curving the ends back out. And then you're going to want to try it on before we cut the ends off. I can do this without poking myself. And that seems to be holding pretty well on my ear. So I'm just going to finish it off by cutting my wire a little bit longer than the ends here. And then I'm just going to curl them inwards. And there is our ear cuff. So the side with the two bends goes towards the front of our ear and the side with the curls goes towards the back of our ear. And it should fit just like that. And now I'm going to decorate it pretty much the same way that I did the last one. So I'm going to start by making our little flower cluster and just building it up from there. And because this one is the entire ear cuff, there's no like other places for us to attach it to. So we really want to build up the cluster as big as we can so that we have to attach it in the least amount of places possible. All right, and there's my cluster, and now I'm just going to attach it. All right, and now it's attached. So again, the last thing I wanna do is add another little like dangly piece, I think. All right, and now that that's attached, both of these ear pieces are officially done. And here's the finished ear cuff. Now when I say that I'm obsessed with this piece, I mean that I am obsessed with this piece. I didn't think that I could love my last one even more than I did, um, but I actually do with this one because the fit on this one is like 10 times better than the last one. And it just like pops into place and fits super, super comfortably. And also you actually don't even need piercings to wear these. So if you've always been really into like earrings and big pieces like this, but you don't have your ears pierced, this is the perfect option for you. And like I said, there's just so much fun and creativity you can do with this. So I hope you guys love this piece just as much as I do. And I really hope you guys have a lot of fun with it. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.